It's been quite a long while since we've discussed the M87 Galaxy and of course the M87 Black Hole, also known as Puehi. The central supermassive black hole in a galaxy 55 million light years away from us, that doesn't just represent the nearest ultramassive black hole to us, with the approximate black hole's mass being 6.5 billion solar masses, or roughly around 50 hundred times more massive than the central black hole inside the Milky Way, but also becoming super famous because of this. The first ever confirmed image of an actual black hole anywhere out there. Released a few years ago by the Event Horizon Telescope. But since these original discoveries, naturally the scientific work has not stopped, and the scientists continuously looked at both the black hole and the jet coming from it, in order to find new mysteries, try to explain more things about the black hole, or just black holes in general, and try to answer important questions such as, ok, but how do these jets even form, what exactly influences them as they escape the black hole, and what kind of effects does this jet have as it travels across the galaxy. And turns out that the scientists did actually discover something really mysterious that nobody can explain right now. For some reason, this unusual jet actually causes certain stars to kind of explode. Ok, not like explode supernova explode, but more like explode continuously producing what we usually refer to as nova. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss M87 once again, talk about what was actually discovered in some of the recent papers, and of course talk about the effects from the jet. But first, very quickly about the galaxy itself. This is actually one of the most massive galaxies in the vicinity, and the galaxy that we know had a lot of different collisions over its history, because it seems to contain 15,000 globular clusters coming from various other previous galaxies. It's also the central part of the galactic cluster it's located in, and as I mentioned previously, contains an ultra-massive black hole in the center, representing one of the most massive black holes within hundreds of millions of light years away from planet Earth, and a black hole so massive and so large in size that the shadow of this black hole appears the largest from planet Earth, even larger than the shadow from the Milky Way galaxy's black hole. Which is of course why it was selected for radio astronomy and for trying to create the first ever image of a black hole. And one thing that the scientists learn about this black hole pretty quickly is that it also obviously, like so many other black holes, spins. As in it actually spins the space-time around itself, warping it extremely fast at something like 90% of the actual physical limit. You can think of it as the space-time itself moving at approximately 90% the speed of light with the black hole spin to some extent also being responsible for the launching of the jet itself. But the actual modeling for how the jet works and how the jet forms today is understood pretty well. It's actually believed to start not just with the spin of the black hole, which is responsible for some of the jet formation, but also with a very powerful accretion disk around the black hole that ends up producing extremely powerful magnetic fields and then ends up producing very very powerful magnetic lines which then become twisted extremely tightly by the spin of the black hole itself. And it's really the combination of all of these effects that then essentially releases the jet that we see. This was modeled using computer simulations a couple of years ago, resulting in a model that shows us that it's the interaction between magnetic fields and the spin of the black hole that seems to be responsible for these relativistic jets. You can find the older paper in the description that basically talks about how all of this was created and how all of this works. But here a lot of scientists were also curious to see if the spin itself potentially influences something else. For example, is there any other influence that it has on the jet that we can then detect by using modern observations? And yeah, the answer is yes. First of all, by observing the jet for basically over a decade now, different observatories discovered these unusual knots that seem to be present everywhere in the jet, that once in a while suddenly increase in brightness and actually produce a lot of x-rays with somewhat apparent periodicity. Now this by itself did not really mean much at first, and could actually be explained by, for example, magnetic fields inside the jet, but the researchers behind the recent paper wanted to dig a little bit deeper. And they started analyzing the jet by looking at much wider data from various telescopes, focusing on 22 years of observation from telescopes like the Hubble telescope and a lot of radio telescopes that studied this black hole for a very long time. In the process of discovering a somewhat unusual pattern that we've never seen before, you can sort of see it right here, an oscillation pattern. A repeating 11 year cycle that sort of seems to wobble the jet just a little bit. In other words, it doesn't just go straight, it seems to go just a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and does this every 11 years. 
And the only conclusion they came to, or the only explanation they have is that it has to be because of the black hole itself, and specifically because of the spin. The only force that's powerful enough to do all of this has to come as a result of a precession of the accretion disk that's most likely just a little bit misaligned with the spin of the black hole. If the black hole spins in one plane of orbit, here the accretion disk seems to spin in a slightly different plane with a slightly different angle. And the interaction between the two drags the accretion disk and its axis along the rotation and through the process of frame dragging misaligns the accretion disk, which then affects the magnetic lines, which then changes the jet. With the amplitude being relatively large as well, approximately 10 degrees. And so it goes up and down by about 10 degrees every 11 years. Which though might not be visible here, becomes visible once you analyze everything by using a lot of different frequencies. And will potentially very likely explain a lot of these observations such as these knots I mentioned previously. But a much more interesting discovery came from an even more recent study. A study that wanted to see if there's maybe any connection between the jet and various explosions we detect in this galaxy. Although like I mentioned before, we're not talking about explosions where their stars go supernova, we are talking about events where the explosion is recurring. We refer to these as nova and it usually involves two types of stars, a red giant and a partner that has to be a white dwarf, with the white dwarf then stealing the mass from the giant until enough gas accumulates on the surface of the white dwarf where it becomes dense enough to initiate a nuclear reaction and to basically produce a very very powerful nuclear explosion. But an explosion that does not destroy the system, it's just not powerful enough to do that. And so basically both of these stars go back to what they used to do just before the explosion. And this can happen many many times and is very often quite periodic. Nova are generally very very common everywhere including the Milky Way and there's possibly one coming up really soon as predicted by various studies. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But as you can imagine, a massive galaxy with so many stars, like M87, has quite a lot of nova happening everywhere. But the researchers wanted to see if there's any connection to maybe the jet or maybe something else. Is there any way the jet influences any of this in the galaxy? And in this case they did this by basically focusing on a kind of a cone, or I guess a kind of a triangle, from the center of the black hole, going all the way out of the galaxy, following the jet. Here the jet is approximately 5000 light years long, only representing a small part of the galaxy, and so if the jet in this case has any influence, we're going to see a lot more nova in a very specific region of M87 galaxy. So in other words, they kind of traced all of this by following the jet from the black hole. And well, surprise, there seems to be a connection. As a matter of fact, a pretty big one. It looks like a lot of nova seem to be aligned with the jet instead of being scattered more randomly kind of suggesting that the jet might be causing nova in a lot of different binary stars. Here they were able to discover 135 different nova within the galaxy, with many of them unexpectedly along the path of the jet. And the chance of this being completely by accident is only about like 0.3%. So 99.7% that this is not by chance. But the biggest mystery is of course, why? What exactly is this jet doing? I mean, it's not like this is some kind of a super powerful laser that's literally destroying stars, because this is more or less a highly accelerated matter that's not really even that dense once it moves away from the black hole. So technically, it shouldn't really make stars explode. But we do have some explanations, which at least for now are still very preliminary. For example, initial proposition was that maybe the jet is powerful enough to somehow heat up the larger star increasing the amount of material that then deposits on the white dwarf, thus accelerating the nova explosion or basically just increasing the frequencies of nova around these binary systems. But as I mentioned before, these jets are just not powerful enough because the radiation coming from the jet hitting the star is actually really low in order to make any of this happen, mostly because of the distances involved. Here we're talking about thousands of light years away from the black hole. Alternative explanation suggests that maybe the jet actually triggers star formation and just ends up producing more binary stars along its path. And because of a higher frequency of binary stars in this region, we just kind of observe more nova. So basically the idea here is that maybe the jet itself serves as a kind of a star creator, not star destroyer. But if so, we kind of expect something similar to happen on the opposite side of the galaxy where there should be a counter jet or the other side of the jet as well. Basically some of these other regions should also have just as many nova because at some point the jet was also powerful there 
and possibly created just as many binaries, but we don't really see that either. So more stars is not the answer either. Or maybe the jet somehow pushes a lot of gas along its path, and some of this gas as it enters various star systems just increases the amount of material accreted on various white dwarfs and thus sets up a nova as well. This would basically make this jet as I guess a kind of a vacuum cleaner, taking up a lot of dust from the entire galaxy and carrying it all across its pathway. But there's just no evidence for any of this either, especially because we don't seem to see a lot of dust traveling across the jet. And so whatever is happening to these stars and whatever the jet is doing to them, at the moment is just completely unknown. It's clearly doing something because statistically it seems to have some kind of an effect, but this is just going to remain a mystery until someone finds a way to figure this out or to physically provide proof for how all of this works. So just another mystery to add to the mystery of galaxies and jets and what these jets do to various galaxies. And the thing is, if this is actually correct and if this idea ends up discovering more evidence, the next question would be if this also applies to a lot of other galaxies out there. Since no other jet has been observed in so much detail, we're not going to know for a very long time, but because some galaxies have jets that are ridiculously long and ridiculously powerful, it would actually be very interesting to find out what actually happens here as well. But we're not going to know for quite some time, until someone explains this or someone observes this in more detail. So yeah, stay tuned, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.